Welcome, my name is Stephen Giambroni. I'm a professor of biology here at Johnson County Community College and I teach the botany course here. And what I'd like to share with you today is a lesson that I've put together uh, that I use with my students that um, pertains to our discussion of ecology. Um, and specifically it's a way of looking at the growth of trees and relating that to um, um, the carbon cycle, which is a component of the, the unit on ecology that we study and uh, actually connect that with potential um, predictions about climate change and how that might affect the growth of plants like trees here in, in the state of Kansas. So to get started, um, just a few things. I always like to outline a few things about what we hopefully can learn or what we should be learning uh, at the end of the lesson. First of all is to kind of be able to discuss some aspects of the carbon cycle, define the concept of carbon fixation, and how that relates to the actual growth of trees. Another thing would be able to relate um, uh, availability of water or um, how the water cycle actually impacts the growth of trees. Uh, we're going to look at annual growth rings, so we'll need to define what an annual growth ring is, and then also um, look at some aspects of uh, one year's worth of growth. We'll look at what's referred to as early or spring wood in the growth ring and we'll look at the uh, late or summer wood and kind of you know compare and contrast those. Um, we'll actually be taking samples of tree rings uh, and we'll be looking at you know trees that are several years old here on campus and of course we can't cut the trees down and look at cross sections. Um, cross sections would kind of look like this. This is referred to as a cookie which is a nice little cross section of, a, of a, either a limb or a small a tree. This is one that's a little bit larger and um, it may be kind of hard to see from your perspective but this is this tree is several years old. You can see the annual growth rings here. We're going to take a look at those here a little bit a little bit closer. But we can't do that with the trees here on campus. People wouldn't like that so what we'll do to sample our trees is to take what's referred to as a bore sample using a tool called an increment bore and we'll look at the growth rings uh, from this perspective. And then we'll measure those and um, look at um, probably several years growth, if we can, maybe back 10 years prior to uh, this year's growth, and look at how much growth occurred over those years by measuring the width of the growth rings. We always talk about ecology in my botany class, and one of the things we have to talk about when we discuss ecology are the different biogeochemical cycles. And that's a big word. Um, it basically means um, that the elements or the, the stuff of matter here on Earth kind of you know, stick around. It kind of cycles around. It doesn't really disappear. So I like to joke with my students and tell them that there may be a little bit of dinosaur carbon in their bodies that you know, was around you know, m millions of years ago. So when we look at the carbon cycle, what I want to kind of focus on with you guys is that uh, trees, as most plants, can actually take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and change that form of carbon from what we refer to as an inorganic form of carbon. Carbon is CO2 and through a process normally referred to as fixation, change that inorganic form of carbon, take it into the biological world and build it into organic biological compounds. So the biological compound we're going to talk about is the compound glucose. So CO2 is taken in from the atmosphere by plants. Um, as trees grow and use the, the carbon from CO2, that carbon is built into glucose and then glucose is manufactured into this compound called cellulose. And, you know, when you think of the trunk of a tree, which, you know, comp comprises most of the mass of a tree, most of that mass is cellulose. In fact, probably the most abundant biopolymer on Earth is uh, this compound we call cellulose. So there's lots of carbon in um, the trunk of a tree. So a little bit about carbon fixation, a little bit about the carbon cycle. Each season's growth or each year's growth uh, is comprised of two components. There is what we refer to as early or spring wood and then late or summer wood. And that early wood is um, wood that is actually put on pretty quickly to the trunk of the tree. In fact, I'll go ahead and use our little model here to kind of illustrate this perhaps a little bit better um, to show you one year's worth of growth and I'll just kind of highlight this area right here. The early or spring wood is depicted by this portion of the model. 
the cells of the, 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 uh, the trunk of the tree are very large, and this um, tissue is put on very quickly. There's usually uh, a greater abundance of water in the water table for the trees, so growth is pretty rapid. As the season progresses and it gets late into the summer, the growth continues, but the amount of tissue um, put on during that period is a little bit less. Also, the, the size of the cells themselves is a lot smaller and more compacted. It actually is, it looks darker when you look at this in cross-section like we're looking at here. So from the lighter portion all the way through this darker portion is one annual ring. Just the lighter portion is the earlier spring wood, and just the darker portion is late or summer wood. So together, this comprises just one year's growth. Now, when we say one year's growth, most trees aren't growing much over the winter time. It's usually, you know, you know, spring through the summer and the maybe early fall. And then because of the shortened photo period and, you know, temperature change also uh, uh, affects that growth uh, ceases until the next year. So as I mentioned, it's not very practical to look at the older growth trees on our campus, cut them down and look at this in cross section. So what we'll do is uh, take some uh, increment bore samples using a tool that I'll show you here. This is what the sample is going to look like and we're going to get a chance to look at this under the microscope and actually um, do some measuring of each year's growth from the current growing season back back as far as we can go. The instrument we'll use is called an increment bore uh, which is kind of just a fancy drill. So there are three parts to it. Uh, as you can see it's kind of like a fancy drill bit. It's very very sharp and it's designed to actually bore in about a 90 degree angle into the uh, uh, trunk of the tree. The center is hollow, so as it bores into the tree, it actually is taking or removing a, a core sample. And then we can extract that and then take it back to the lab and, and analyze that. So we'll um, set up this like this. We've got the, the bit, we've got the handle, and we'll bore into the tree like this. And then we'll insert this extraction tool to remove our bore sample. Okay. And um, once we get our samples, we'll bring them back to the laboratory. We'll get out our dissection microscopes. And under the microscope, we'll actually start measuring the, um, the width of each uh, season's growth. Okay, so here we are in the field, and we have a student who's got the increment bore. He's um, actually boring into the, the tree trunk. You can see that he, the, um, he's got it nice and perpendicular to the, the plane of the growth of the tree. He's got the bore up about pretty close to the middle of the, of the tree trunk. Uh, it doesn't help to go past the middle of the tree because then you're, you're sampling part of the tree. You don't need to. He just inserted the uh, extraction uh, device, the extractor. And as you can see, sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do to withdraw the extractor. He's kind of tweaking the actual bit kind of back and forth. Um, you know, there's a lot of tension. Uh, you know, the, the bore sample is actually inside that bit, and there's a lot of tension placed on that. He's trying to extract it. Um, you know, there's always the theory, and then there's the actual practice. But uh, it looks like he's, no, oh, looks like we got it maybe. And, yes, there we go. We've got a nice sample from that tree that we can look at back in the lab. So this would be a typical view under the dissection microscope that students would um, use to view the increment bore sample. And what we're going to do is identify this particular year's growth right here with a pencil. And it's always kind of a nice uh, idea to put a little pencil line right there. So what we're looking at, we're, we're kind of making a demarcation between the previous year's growth and this year's growth here that we're actually going to measure. Uh, if you notice this little area between here and here, the, the, those pores in the wood, that represents the earlier spring wood. Uh, it's, this is where the, the, the tissue is laid down very quickly and the pores are very large. And then later in the growing season, when water becomes a little bit less plentiful, the wood uh, or the pores in the wood are a little bit uh, closer together. This is all represent, representing the xylem tissue, uh, which is the, the majority of the wood in the uh, trunk of the tree. So we can make another tick mark here. 
just so it's easier to see. So then students would measure the distance between the beginning of this year's growth and then the beginning of the next year's growth, uh, representing uh, how much uh, carbon was assimilated in the trunk of the tree for that particular growing season. The way this sample is oriented, um, it's this side here that represents the bark side. So, you know, growth is always going, you know, in this direction as the tree grows. Okay. And it's a simple task then if we can identify where the bark is, uh, which would represent where we are uh, with the growth of that tree in that moment. We can measure back and uh, just simply count how many uh, growth rings, annual rings we have, and we'll know, uh, you know, what year, what particular year that growth occurred in. We've had a chance to um, sample the tree rings. We've looked at them under the microscope and we've measured the, um, the width of the rings you know, from year to year. What we can do from, from those data is actually correlate that to annual precipitation. And we can actually um, access records of uh, annual precipitation for different regions in the United States. So the data for precipitation is freely accessible via the NCDC website. Um, and then we can uh, look at the amount of precipitation received year to year in eastern Kansas and then we can do a correlation. We can correlate that with the um, annual growth from from those years and see what we can come up with. So what you're looking at here is an Excel spreadsheet um, looking at the data from a green ash or fraxinus a tree here on campus um, and we've uh, done a correlation between annual growth from year to year and precipitation uh, received here in eastern Kansas from the NCDC uh, website. And as you can see from the graph, um, there's kind of a nice correlation. The greater the amount of annual precipitation, the greater the annual growth for the tree. And for most trees, this is, this is the case. Um, a limiting factor for growth for these types of plants is soil moisture or, or access to, to water over the growing season. And it's probably especially access to water earlier in the growing season. Now, the, the data from uh, NCDC that we're using for the correlation here is just total annual precipitation. It's not how much we got early in the season versus late. Uh, if we wanted to maybe fine tune this a little bit, we can look at those types of, of data, but we're kind of keeping it simple here. Um, so I mentioned earlier in our uh, the introduction for the lesson, how does this connect with climate change? Um, the next slide we're going to look at here is uh, a summary. This was compiled in 2008 uh, via the Climate and Energy Project. This summarizes the data from Johannes Fetema and Nate Brunzel. These are professors um, at uh, KU who are climatologists. And what they've done is um, use their research in climatology to make predictions for the next 90 to 100 years you know, what things might be like here in eastern Kansas uh, for us. And as you can see from this slide, um, a few things are, you know, are taken pretty uh, early or pretty easily. Um, first of all, less predictability with rainfall or precipitation in general. Um, the annual amount of precipitation is predicted to be about the same over the next 100 years, but how the precipitation falls could be significantly different. Um, and periods of drought followed by heavy periods of uh, heavy precipitation usually leads to greater erosion and even though the same amount of uh, precip falls access in the in the soil and the groundwater to these plants to these trees we're looking at is almost certainly going to be perturbed and probably um, in, in the negative sense so the connection between um, the predictions for climate change and and what we know about tree growth is that it's going to um, be a more difficult world for trees um, in the coming hundred years or so Hopefully you know a little bit more about these things than you did before you, uh, before you watched the lesson. I uh, hope you learned something and I hope you had fun doing it. Thanks for joining us.